What's up? Welcome back to Vagra Brothers. Right now we are at Urban Kitchen in Lima, Peru, and we're joined by Valeria Basurco. Hola! And today we're going to make a very typical Peruvian dish, ceviche. everybody we have come to urban kitchen we're gonna learn a little bit of uh, Peruvian cuisine we're gonna get our hands dirty actually we're gonna keep our hands clean <laughs> because we're preparing food but we have some new friends here Dile hola. Hola a todos. This Bienvenidos is a Peru. <laughs> Gracias. We got Luke still Como estás? Hanging. Yo. Tengo una aquí. Ooh. Muy rico. and there was Ignacio but Man, he's sorry, gone so we're gonna do the first dish ceviche Valeria is from Peru, and it's also her first time cooking ceviche. <laughs> so I think it's the first for everyone, and we're gonna learn. So for making ceviche, we need to take a few things into consideration. First, the fish it has to be very, very fresh in order to eat it raw. Okay? You are gonna start chopping the onions, the cheese, and the cilantro, which are the flavors that are gonna be inside the ceviche. And you are later gonna make the tiger's milk. Have you ever heard of tiger's milk? I don't know. I'm not no. sure if we're talking about the same thing. Tiger's milk is the juice of the ceviche. Okay. okay. And these ones, we're going to put some extra spice. Okay. If you don't like it, you put it on the side. I love so. spicy. All right. So okay. We're going to go for double the amount. I think I and you're going to chop everything however you want because we're going to put it in the blender. So go. Lime juice. Right. The most important ingredient is this part of the recipe. Because we're in Lima, right? We're in Lima. Lima. A little bit of salt. Actually, a lot of salt. And this is a very, very mild fish stock. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why mild? Because I don't want my ceviche to taste like a soup. Ice cubes. I'm blending really well. Ah. For ceviche, which one is better? This one or the one? For the ceviche, for the dish, always red. Always. If you don't have red, chili. Uh -huh. Good amount, okay, wow. with everything. Yes, and now you're gonna see. We will do only this. Okay. That's it. Okay. Okay, because we need all this to that's it. So we want our tiger milk to be thick but not too chunky. Yes. There we are. Perfect. Pick it up and then guys you need to try it now. Okay. This go. So when people buy fish fresh in the market, like what should they be looking for when they're buying raw fish? First of all, smell. What do you smell? Fish. No, not nah. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> a fish starts to smell when it starts to go off. Yeah. That fishy smell and flavor is not great. You know? know your fish monger <laughs> and trust your fish monger. You try this? Uh, not yet. We want to make this straight away, but if you don't make it straight away, you put this in the fridge. Okay, so now, the fish. Boom. Okay. Sivas, Corvina, we say here, one of the best fish we have around. You can go for something like this, and then just... How many varieties of corn are there in Peru? Uh, no, to be honest, I would assume that more than 100, to be honest. Wow. We, this is a, the most typical one, that's the one that we call choclo. That would be, choclo is synonym for us as corn. This is the one that you boil and you put in salads, you eat with ceviche. It's a mild one, but it's very juicy and tender. So you, you eat it as a snack, salty, crunchy. And then we make beer out of corn. It's called chicha de jora, okay. which is a ferment of uh, corn. Ceviche is served with sweet potato. Okay, this cooked sweet potato, just to balance a little bit of the flavors. And with corn. If you travel a little bit in Peru, you're gonna see that in different regions, they add different things. Excellent. So First rule, fresh fish. Second, temperature, everything cold. Third rule, everything ready. We even have a dish where you're gonna eat ready. So you need to make it, you make it and you eat it. Okay, so first thing we need to go into the fish, salt. And good amount of salt. Look how the salt is gonna be absorbed by the fish in seconds. Second ingredient, just a tiny bit of lime juice. And now you're gonna see the change. Okay, use of the lime, okay? So it's turning white. Exactly. Wow. Look how it starts to change 
in what, 15 seconds? And there is cooking. And there is cooking. So when you have that whitish coming out, yeah. you start chili, but we're going to put this one. Okay. And then you put this cilantro and onions. Okay. So I'm going to put the finely chopped chilies. Now put the yeah. coarsely chopped cilantro. Excellent. Cilantro. Okay, there we are. All of it? Yeah. yeah let's do it. That, that's good. That's okay. Good. And the uh, onions. Try to separate them a little bit when you. That they also have to be very fine. Okay. That's perfect. <laughs> okay, and then we mix it. So now this has already the taste of ceviche. It has all the ingredients. There. Mm. Salty, spicy, little bit of acid. You know? So the only thing that is really missing here is the acidity. The tiger's not bad. We have the tiger's not So here we go. So fresh. Yeah, it's good. If you want them, you eat them. If you don't, then wow. you're good. And then you eat them on the side. Good. Take everything. All at once. Corn and the potato. Mm. What do you do that? Wow. We're pretty good cooks for our mm -hmm. first time. I think we should open the restaurant. It's so easy. Yeah. So good. Again, Peruvian food is like, it's just such a, a fusion food, you know, you have, like you said, the influences of, of Japanese, Spanish, the indigenous ingredients. Yeah, and then so, you, you need to think about not only, like, a lot of cultural influence, but also ingredients, you know. We start getting things, but as we can grow them here, because of the different types of areas that we have in the country, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's easy, so our, our it's, like, it's like I always say, our fridge is always full. You know, so Peru is like a full fridge. Mm -hmm. You can find almost anything because of the availability of products and the different types of climates that we have at the same time in different parts of the country. The crazy thing, just to get a little bit nerdy for a second, they, they have this thing called the, the idea is the Colombian exchange, that before Europeans came to the Americas, mm -hmm. there were more varieties of every type of vegetable in each continent, but fewer types of vegetables. For so, sure. so you had like, hundreds of type of corn in the Americas, but no corn in Europe. Yeah. And now we have more more types of vegetables, but fewer varieties, yeah, varieties. in each one. Yeah. So we have corn in America, but we only have like one type of corn, where you guys have hundreds. That's another thing that we need to take care of, because we need to know what we have, mm -hmm. and how we can not let it die. Yeah. In Peru, I was, I normally say we have more than 2,000 varieties of potatoes, but I was reading the other day, someone said more than 3,000 varieties. So imagine that, Yeah. 3,000. So whenever someone comes from Europe and says, when you cook an octopus, you need to put a potato and the potato, when the potato is cooked, the octopus is done. Here, it doesn't make sense because which, which, which potato are you going to use? You have one that's good in 10 minutes and another one that's good in an hour. You know? Yeah. There, in Spain, you have two types. So yeah. But it's cool because here it's like, you have both the variety of different types of ingredients and the influence from Europe and Asia. So you have like the best of both worlds right here in one place. Okay, well thank you for watching. That was How to Make a Ceviche. Big thanks to Ignacio for teaching us from here at Urban Kitchen. And thank you to Valeria. If you've not already subscribed to our channel, you should go subscribe. There'll be a link in the info box. But for now, we're gonna finish eating this wonderful ceviche. And I hope that yours at home tastes as good as this one. <laughs> so if you like the video, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe to Bagger Brothers, and turn on the notifications if you have not already. In the meantime, stay curious, keep exploring, and we'll see you guys on the road. <laughs>